welcome to the stream. I'm baking bagels this morning. My name's Steven. take my first batch out of the pot. Put seeds on them. Half sesame, half everything. Is this that cooked bagel?
got? Baking bagels. I've one batch in the oven and one in my pot. My pot right here. Just doing some stretching. I have a long day ahead of me. Are you? I don't know. What? Angle? I don't know. Single. Uh, I, uh, I'm trying to avoid answering personal questions on uh, on this app, so I'm gonna refrain. Answering that question. Mostly for security reasons. <laughs> You'll be the, I'll be a slave to my bagels. Hello. <laughs> I, I'm sure I already have people that are slaves to my bagels. So. Sorry, I don't want to make light of slavery. I'm just like saying my bagels are good. Good morning, welcome to the stream. My name's Steve. I'm baking bagels. Good morning. I'm supposed to have today off, but another baker had something to do, so I said I would. I'm not complaining. I need the extra money, so. Sorry, I missed your comment. turn the camera around, there's a crow out there that's definitely up to something that's more interesting than I am up to this morning. Uh, no, you're tired when you have problems counting. Oh, I missed that, sorry.
Yeah, this is on Lonsdale. Lonsdale and uh, whatever, 17th or whatever. We have three other locations though. There's one on there it is. Um, there's one on Main and Broadway. One on Commercial Drive. One in Park in Tilford. Good morning. Salutations from North Vancouver. I would love to visit Paris. I've never, I've actually never been to any European country, so. been to Mexico and Hawaii, and the United States of America. Batches in the oven. Ha 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 ha. I was, I was trying to do Count Dracula. I don't know. Ha 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 I don't know if that joke, I don't know if it was a joke, but uh, it's not cute. Trying to tenderize my back here. It's a little bit stiff this morning. How is life in Vancouver? 
Um, yeah, it's, that, uh, it's a great, it's a beautiful city. I, I especially love summertime. Um, it rains a lot here, you know, the, it's not a cliche or a platitude, it's true, it rains a lot here sometimes. Um, which is sort of a downer sometimes, you know, sometimes it's easier to cope with than others, so. Um, but other than that, the city's great, people are wonderful. Um, we, no, we do not have delivery in North Vancouver. We do in Vancouver, we have, we use Foodie, but Foodie's not available in North Vancouver yet. Or, or they might be available, with, I'm not sure if it is. Well, anyways, yeah, we don't have, it's a, they don't deliver for us on the North Shore here, so, for whatever reason, I'm not entirely sure. Sorry, I don't have the details. I'm just the baker. Oh, hey, who, who are you? Johnny. Do I, do we know each other in the real world or? There was a tone of familiarity in that. Oh, okay, okay. All's good. Okay. Here we go, I'm gonna flip, flip the board. Put the bagels on the neck. Thanks for watching. Glad that uh, glad that you find my stream is interesting. Sorry, I missed that. Faded too quickly. It faded too quickly for my eyes to read. What is going on here? Rosemary Rocks, yeah, it's, uh, it's a the founder of the business came up with the name based on, on a, a bagel flavor that they had at uh, the original bakery that she started, or that her father started. Sorry, something wrong with my shiva. It's lost, lost its edge or something. Not doing its jaw. I I burnt the 
tip yesterday. You can see that. That was uh, an accident. I need to. I need to be more careful. It was smoking when I uh, took it out of the oven. I have two batches in the oven and uh, one in the pot. And there's about, about half of them have boiled to the surface. That was a weird sentence. Oh, it fades too quickly. It fades. I'm baking bagels. Sorry, I missed that, that comment. Uh, so I usually recite some poetry in the morning as a mental exercise, just to get my brain going. You deserve my following? Nice, thank you. Thank you for following. Like I said, I, I was supposed to have today off, um, but I'm working for the other baker. Something came up, but uh, nice. Yeah, my, my educational background is in um, is in lit literature. I have a, a BA in communication culture with a minor in English and. Or double minor in English and art. So I studied. I, I took a class in my third, I think it was my third year in Victorian literature. And uh, I fell in love with the poetry from that time, like uh, Emily Dickinson, Robert Browning, Elizabeth Browning. Shelley, uh, Lord Byron. No, Lord Byron, I think was a little bit before. I think he was more romantic. I'm not sure if he was Victorian. But yeah, um, I, yeah, so I've been trying to memorize as much of his, uh, of, uh, as much as I can of Robert Browning's catalog. I've learned Pi Piper and Hamlin, and I'm currently memorizing uh, 
child, child Merlin to a dark tower came. Which is another long poem by Robert Browning. I really love Robert Browning's poetry because it, it uh, it's very, very supernatural. There's a lot of ma there's there's always magic in his poetry. Yeah, the Pied Piper. I've been pretty obsessed with that narrative. I haven't read any other versions. I know there are, I'm sure there are other versions out there, but um, the one I'm familiar with is the is Robert Browning version. I should, I should um, do some research on the poem. Like, I've read, I've done a little bit of research on the poem. I don't, uh, no, I'm no scholar on it or anything, but. Yeah. Um, yeah, I've been trying to. Uh, I mean, well, mostly I just want to, you know, practice the poem and like. Um, I want to be able to perform the words. And uh, give them. Well. Give them dramatic life. My first batch. There's my everything. Actually, like it pretty good. Pretty good this morning. Sorry, miss. Uh, is that There's some sesame. Yeah, so I guess I'm, I'm going to recite Pied Piper Pamela. This is a mental exercise. Hopefully, you find it entertaining. Hamlin Towns in Brunswick by famous Hanover City. The river Wesser, deep and wide, washes its wall on the southern side. A pleasanter spot you never spy. But when begins my ditty almost 500 years ago, to see the townsfolk suffer so from the vermin was a pity. 
rats, they fought the dogs and killed the cats who bit the babies in it. They ate the cheeses from the bats and licked the soup from the cooks on ladles. Split open the kegs of salted sprouts, made nests in the mud and Sunday hats, and even spoiled the women's chats by drowning out their speaking with shrieking and squeaking at fifty different sharps and flats. At last, people in a body to the town hall came flocking. Tis clear, cried they, our mayor is a naughty. And as for our corporation, shocking. To think we buy gowns lined with vermin. For adults who can't or won't determine what's best to rid us of our vermin. You hope because you're old and obese, fine and furry civic robes ease. Rouse up, sirs, give your brains a racking. Give finer, find the remedy we are lacking. Or sure as fate will send you packing. At this, the mayor of corporation quaked with mighty consternation. An hour they sat in council. At length, the mayor broke silence. For a gilder, I my ermine gown sell. I wish I were a mile hence. It's easy to bid one rack on the green. I'm sure my forehead aches again. I scratch it so, but all in vain. Oh, for a trap, a trap, a trap. Just as he said, this one should have at the chamber door, but a gentle tap. Bless us, cried the mayor, what's that? With the corporation as he sat, looking little to wonder his fat. brain went totally blank there. Let's just start at the... <laughs> oh, one... Fifth days are always the hardest. This is my, my fifth day. And uh, my brain is... That says it all. That says it all. To get some moisture into my body. Or they sat in council, and then the fair break broke silence. For a guild, they're eyed by ermine gown cells. I wish I were a mile hence. It's easy to bid one rack one's brain. I'm sure my poor head aches again. I scratch my head, but all in vain. Oh, for a trap, a trap, a trap. Just as he said, this one should have at the chamber door, but a gentle tap. Bless us, cried the mayor. What's that? With the corporation as he sat, looking little through wondrous fat, nor brighter were his eyes, nor moister than a too long open oyster. Save by a new his punch was mutinous, for a plate of turtle green and glutinous, only a scraping of shoes on a mat. Anything like the sound of a rot makes my heart go pit a pat. Come in, cried the mayor, looking bigger, and in did come the strangest figure, a long queer. And in did come the Oh my god. I don't know if I should even try today. I'm sweet prepared. for bagels.
How many? Um, I have uh, a 30 in heaven and I have 30 in the pot. Try Hamlin uh, Pied Piper again here. I don't know what's going on. Mental and uh, physical fatigue. No. I feel pretty good actually. Hamlin Towns in Brunswick by famous Hanover City. The river Western deep and wide washes its wall on the southern side. A pleasanter spot you never spied, but when begins my ditty, almost 500 years ago, to see the townsfolk suffer so from vermin was a pity. Rats, they fought the dogs and killed the cats and bit the babies in the cradles and ate the cheese from the vats and licked the soup from the cooks and ladles. Split open the kegs of salted sprats they nest in the men's Sunday hats, and even spoiled the women's chats by drowning out their speaking with shrieking and squeaking and clicking different sharp, sharp and flat. At last the people in a body to the town hall came flocking. Tis clear, cried they, our mare is a naughty, and as for our preparation, shocking, to think we buy gowns lined with vermin, for dull to canter won't determine what's best to rid us out of our, of our vermin. You hope because you're old and obese to find in furry civic robes ease. Rouse up, sirs, give your brains a racking. Find the remedy we are lacking, or sure as fate we'll send you packing. As this the mayor and corporation quaked for any consternation. An hour he sat in council, I length from there broke silence. For I failed their eyes my ermine down cell. I wish I were a mile hence. It's easy to bid one rack one's brain. I'm sure my poor head aches again. I scratch it so, but all in vain. Oh, for a trap, a trap, a trap. Just as he said this, what should happen? At the chamber door, but a gentle tap. Bless us, Codger Mayor, what's that? With the corporation as he sat, looking little through wonder as that. Nor brighter were his eyes, nor moister, than a too long open oyster. Save when at noon his paunch grew mutinous, with for a plate of turtle green and glutinous, only a scraping of shoes on a mat, anything like the sound of a rat made from a heart instead of hat. Come in, cried the mayor, looking bigger, and in did come the strangest figure. His long fair coat he yield to head, what's half yellow and half red. And he himself was tall and thin, with sharp blue eyes, speech like a pin, with light blue hair and poison skin, nor tuft of hair on cheek, nor beard on chin, but lips were smiled and out and in. There was no place in the city king, and nobody could enough admire this tall man in his quaint attire. Quote one, it's as my great grandsire, starting up at the trump of doom's tone, had walked this way from his painted tombstone. He bent towards the council table, but please, your honor, said he, I am able, by means of secret charm to draw, all the creatures living beneath the sun, the crawler, swimmer, fly, or run, after me, so as you never saw. And I chiefly use my charm on creatures that do people harm, the mole and toad and newton viper, People call me the Pied Piper, and here they notice round his neck a scarf of red and yellow stripe, to match with his coat of self same check. And that scarf then hung a pipe, and his fingers they noticed were ever strained, as if impatient to be playing upon this pipe, as low it dangled over his vesture so old fangled. Yes, said he, Pied Piper as I am, in part hardy I presently can, last June from a sweet swarm to that. I ease the age of the Nizam, of a monstrous brood of vampire bats. And as for what your frame bewilders, if I rid your town of rats, will you give me one thousand guilders? One, fifty thousand was the exclamation of an astonished mayor and corporation. Once into the street, Piper stepped, smiling first a little smile, as if he knew what magic slept in his quiet pipe a while. Like a musical adept to blow his pipe, his lips he wrinkled, and green and blue his sharp eyes twinkled, like a candle flame where salt is sprinkled. And there are three shrill notes the pipe uttered. He heard as if an army muttered. 
and a muttering grew to a grumbling, and a grumbling grew to a mighty rumbling, and out of the houses came the rats tumbling, great rats, small rats, mean rats, brawny rats, brown rats, black rats, gray rats, tawny rats, brave old potters, dear young friskers, fathers, mothers, uncles, cousins, walking tails, pricking whiskers, families like hens in dozens, brothers, sisters, husbands, wives, all the pipe piper for their lives, each street to street he piped advancing, and step for step they followed dancing, till he came to the river Wesser, where an all plunged and perished, save one who stout as Julius Caesar, swam across and lived to carry, as he the manuscript he cherished, to red land home his commentary, which was, at first shrill notes of the pipe, I heard a sound as of scraping tripe, and putting apples wondrous ripe, into the side of presses bright, and it seemed as if a voice sweeter far, and moving away a pickle tub board, and leaving a jar of concert cupboard, and drawing the corks of train oil flask, and breaking the hoops of butter casks, and it seemed as if a voice sweeter far than by harp or by salary is breathed, called out, O oh, rats, rejoice, the world is going to a vast dry saltery, so munch on, crunch on, take your nunch on, breakfast, supper, dinner, lunch on, and just as a bulky sugar punch on, already stayed like a great sun shone, gracious, scarce, and peace before me, just as he thought had said, come for me, I found the west rolling over me. You should have heard the Hamlin people ring the bells so they rock the steeple. Go, cried the mayor, and get long poles, poke out the nets and block up the holes. Consult with carpenters and builders, and leave in our town not even a trace of the rats. When suddenly up the face of the piper perked in the marketplace, the first of you please, my thousand guilders. A thousand guilders, the mayor looked blue, so did the corporation too. For countless dinners made rare havoc with Claret, Moselle, Vin de Grove, Pub, and half the money would replenish my cellar's biggest blood of Rhenish to pay this sum to a wandering fellow with gypsy coats red and yellow. Besides, quoth the mayor with a knowing wink, our business was down at the river's brink. We saw with our eyes the vermin sink, and what's dead can't come to life, I think. So, friend, we're not folks to shrink from our duty of giving you something to drink, and a matter of money to put in your coat. But as to the gilders, what we spoke, of them, as you well know, was in joke. Besides, our losses have made us thrifty. A thousand guilders come, take fifty. The piper's face fell, and he cried, No trifling, I can't wait beside. I promise a visit by the to Baghdad, and accept the crime of the head cooked pot hodge. All he's rich in, for having left in the caliph's kitchen of a nest of storms, no survivor. With him, I prove no bargain driver. With you, don't think I'll bake a skyver. And folks who put me in a passion, they find me pipe after another fashion. How, kind the mayor, do you think I brook, being worse treated than a cook, insulted by a rival, with idle pipe and vesture piebald? Threaten us, fellow, do your worst, blow your pipe there till you burst. Once more he stepped into the street, and to his lips again laid his long pipe of smooth spray cane, and ere he blew three notes, such sweet soft notes as yet musicians cunning never gave in raptured air. There was a rustling that seemed like a bustling of merry crowds jostling, a picking and bustling. Small feet were pattering, wooden shoes clattering, little hands clapping, and little tongues chattering, and like foals in a farmyard when barley is scattering, out came the children running, all the little boys and girls, with rosy cheeks and flax and curls sparkling eyes and teeth like pearls, tripping and skipping ran merrily after, wonderful music was shouting and laughter. The mayor was dumb and the council stood, as if they were changed into blocks of wood, unable to move a step or cry, to the children merrily skipping by, could only follow with an eye, that joyous crowd at the piper's back, and how the mayor was on the rack, and the wretched council's woodland feet, as the piper turned from the high street. I'll return from south to west, and to Copperberg Hill his steps addressed, and after him the children pressed. Great was the joy in every breast. He never can cross the mighty top. He's forced to let the piping drop, and we shall see our children stop. When lo, they reach the mountainside, a wondrous portal opened wide, as if a cavern was suddenly hollowed. The piper advanced, and the children followed. And when all were in, the very last, the door in the mountainside shut fast. Did I say all? No, one was lame, and could not dance the whole of the way. And in after years, if you would blame his sadness, he was used to say, It's dull in our town since my playmates left. I can't forget if I'm bereft of all the pleasant sights they see, which the piper also promised me. For he led us, he said, to the land, joining the town at just at hand, where waters gushed and fruit trees grew, and flowers before the fair of you, and everything was new. 
sparrow is bright as a peacock here, and the dogs are around our fellow deer, and honeybees have lost their stings, and horses were born with eagles' wings, and just as I became assured, my lame foot was speedily cured. The music stopped and I stood still and found myself outside the hill, left behind against my will to go now limping as before and never hear of that country more. Alas, alas, for Hamelin, there came into many a burger's pate a text which says at heaven's gate, hopes to the rich at as easy rate as the needle's eye takes a Hamelin. The mare said east, west, north, and south to offer the paper by word of mouth, wherever it was men's lot to find it, silver and gold to his heart's content. If only he'd return the way he went, and bring the children behind him. But when he saw it was lost endeavor, the piper and dance was, were gone forever. They made a decree that lawyers never should think their records dated duly, if at the day of the month and year, these words do not as well appear. And so long after what happened here, on the 22nd of July, 1376, and the better memory to fix the place of the children's last retreat, they called it the Pied Piper Street. Were anyone playing pipe or tabor, was sure for his teacher to lose his labor, nor suffered they hostile in your tavern. The shock was mirth, the street so solemn, and opposite the place of the cavern, they wrote the story on a column, and on great church window painted, the same to make the world acquainted, how their children were stolen away, and there it stands to this very day. And I must not omit to say, that in Transylvania there's a tribe of alien people who ascribe the way and dress of which their neighbors lay such stress to their fathers and mothers having risen out of some subterranean prison into which they were to pan long time ago in a mighty band out of Hamlet towns and Brunswick land. But how or why, they don't understand. Oh. <laughs> ah. I made a few errors, sorry. A little bit off this morning. Impaired by sleep deprivation is the correct terminology for the condition that I have experienced. Sorry, Mr. Your comment. My job in a nutshell, you cooking zas, I'm cooking bagels. They can, I cook then I bake bagels. Oh, it's hot here. It's hot. It's gonna be a hot day today. Uh, yeah, it's, it's designed for pizzas, but um, we've made a few modifications for the bagels. I think uh, the biggest difference is there's a... Um, I 
think the, the with pizza you like to have the deck. Uh, I think you can have the deck heated. I'm not sure though. I'm not sure what the difference is. But they made modifications to this oven for bagels. But uh, they they put this big iron bar in front of the flame. I'm not sure if that's actually necessary though. Pretty sure I could bake without it. But the bakers that came before me felt like it was necessary to have. So. But this is a pizza oven. It's, this pizza is, uh, this oven is designed for pizzas, but we make bagels in it. I'm sure you can bake a very nice pizza in here though. I haven't done it myself, but. I'm sure it'd be wonderful. Oh my god, it's going to be a gorgeous day today here in North Vancouver. It's already sunny. It's not even 6 o'clock yet, I think. I don't know, I haven't looked at the time yet. capable of mumbling this morning apparently. You can see how, how sunny it is by the glare off my white skin. I need to get a you get out in the sun. Look how white I am. Like a, a white glow. Hamlin and towns in Brunswick by famous Han of the city. The river western deep and wide washes its wall in southern side. A pleasanter spot you never spied, but when begins my ditty, almost 500 years ago, to see the townsfolk suffer so from vermin was a pity. Rats, they fought the dogs and killed the cats and made babies in the cradles, and ate the cheese from the vats and licked the soup from the cook's own ladle. Split open the kegs of salted sprats, made nests in their Sunday hats, and even spoiled the women's chats by drowning out their speaking with shrieking. Alas, people in a body to the town hall came flocking. Tis clear cried they, our mayor is a naughty. And as for our corporation, shocking. To think we buy gowns lined with ermine. For dolts who can't or won't determine what's best to rid us of our vermin. You hope because you're old and obese to find the furry civic rogues ease. Rouse up, sirs, give your brains a racking. To find the remedy we are lacking. Or sure as fate will send you packing. At this the mayor and corporation quaked with a mighty consternation. An hour they sat in council, at length the mayor broke silence. For a gilder, I but urban gown sell, I wish I were a mile hence. It's easy to bid one rack one's brain, I'm sure my poor head aches again. I scratch it so, but all in vain, oh for a trap, a trap, a trap. Just as he said this, what should happen? I have the chamber door, but a gentle tap. Bless us, cried the mayor, what's that? With the corporation as he sat, looking little to wonder as fat. Nor brighter were his eyes, nor look moister than a too long open oyster, save when at noon his paws grew mutinous, for a plate of turtle green and glutinous, 
only a scraping of shoes on mat. Anything like the sound of a rat makes my heart go sit. I'm the inside mayor that's in bigger, and in this the strangest figure, his long queer coat from heel to head was half yellow and half red, and he himself was tall and thin, with sharp blue eyes each like thin, and light loose hair and swarthy skin, nor tuft of hair on cheek nor beard on chin, but lips were smile went out and in. There was no knowing his kith or kin, and nobody could enough admire this tall man in his quaint attire. Quote one, it's as my great grandsire, starting up at the trump of Dune's tone, had walked this way from his painted tombstone. He bent towards his council table, and please, your honor, said he, I am able, by means of secret charm to draw, all the creatures living beneath the sun, they crawl or sun, fly or run, act me so as you never saw, and I chiefly use my charm on creatures that do people harm, the mole and toad and newton viper, the people call me the pied piper, and here they notice round his neck, a scarf of red and yellow stripe, to match his coat of self same check, an odd scarf's end hung a pipe, and his fingers they notice were ever strained, as if impatient to be playing upon this pipe, as low it dangled over his vesture so old fangled. Yes, said he, pie piper as I am, in Tartari I fred the camp, last June from his huge swarms of gnats. I eased an age of the Nizam, the monster grew vampire bats, and as for what your brain bewilders, if I rid your town of rats, will you give me one thousand guilders? One fifty thousand was the exclamation of an astonished mayor and corporation. Into the seat the piper stepped, smiling first a little smile, as if he knew what magic slept in his quiet pipe the while. Like a musical adept to blow his pipe, his lips he wrinkled, and green and blue his sharp eyes twinkled, like a candle flame where salt is sprinkled. And ere the three shrill notes the pipe uttered, he heard as if an army muttered, and muttering grew to a grumbling, and a grumbling grew to a mighty rumbling. And out of the house came the rats tumbling, the great rats, small rats, lean rats, brawny rats, brown rats, black rats, gray rats, gray rats, rats, brave old plotters, gay young friskers, fathers, mothers, uncles, cousins, cocking tails and cracking whiskers, families but in, in tens of dozens, brothers, sisters, husbands, wives, followed the Pied Piper for their lives, the sweet street he piped advancing, and step for step they followed dancing, until they came to the river western, where it all plunged and perished, save one who stout Julius Caesar, swam across the lift to carry, as he the manuscript he cherished, to rat land home his commentary, which was, out first shrill not thus the pipe, or heard a sound as a scraping trike, and putting out his wonders right, into the side of presses right, and it seems as if the boys sweeter far, and moving away a pickle tub board, and leaving a jar of conserved cupboards, a drawing of corks of train oil flasks, and breaking hoops of butter casks, it seems as if the voice sweeter far than by harp or by solemn and please, called out, O oh, rats, for joys, the world's thrown to a vast by psaltery, so munch on, crunch on, take your nunch on, breakfast, supper, dinner, lunch on, a just a bulky sugar punch on, already oh, stayed like a great sun shone, gracious scarcity before me, just as we thought you said come bore me, I found the western rolling over me. You should have heard the Hamlin people ring the bells till they rock the steeple. Go, cried the mayor, and get long poles. Poke up the nests and block up the holes. Consult the carpenters and builders, and leave in our town not even a trace of the rats. When somebody up the face of the pipe referred to the marketplace, the first few please, a thousand guilders. A thousand guilders, the mayor looked blue, so does the corporation too. For council then has made rare havoc, with Terre, Mosel, Vin de Grand Pop, and half the money would replenish, the cellar's biggest come to furnish. To pay this sum to a wondering fellow, with gypsy coat, red and yellow. Besides, quoth the mayor, annoyingly, our business was done at the river's brink. We saw with our eyes the vermin sink, and once dead can't come to life, I think. So, friend, we're not folks to shrink from our duty of giving you something to drink, and a matter of money to put in your coat. But as for the guilders, what we spoke of them, as you well know, was a joke. Besides, our losses have made us thrifty. A thousand guilders come to take fifty. The piper's face fell, and he cried, No trifling, I can't wait beside. I promised to visit by dinner time, Baghdad, and accept the prime of the head cook's potage, all he's rich in, proudly left in the caliph's kitchen, of a nest of scorpions, no survivor. With him I proved no bargain driver, with you don't think I'll bait this diver. My folks who put me in a passion may find me pipe after another fashion. How, cried the mayor, do you think I've brooked, being worse treated than a cook, insulted by a rival, with idle pipe and vesture piebald? Threaten us, fellow, do your worst, blow your pipe there till you burst. 
Once more he stepped into the street, and to his lips again laid his long pipe of smooth spray cane. Then air he blew three notes, such sweet, soft notes as yet musicians cunning never gave the enraptured air. It was a rustling that seemed like a bustling of merry crowds jostling and pitching and hustling. Small feet were pattering, wooden shoes clattering, little hands clapping, and little tongue, little hand, little tongues chattering, and like folds in a farmyard where barley is scattering. Out came the children running, all the little boys and girls with rosy cheeks and flax and curls and sparkling eyes and teeth like pearls. Chipping and skipping ran merrily after, the wonderful music and shouting and laughter. The mayor was dumb and the council stood as if they were changed into blocks of wood, unable to move a step or cry to the children merrily skipping by. Could only follow with an eye that joyous crowd from Piper's back. And how the mayor was on the rack, and the wretched council slipped with feet as the Piper turned from the high street to where the west rolled its waters, right in the way of their sons and daughters. How he returned from south to west, and to Copperberg Hill his steps addressed. And after him the children pressed, great was the joy in every breast. He never crossed the mighty top, he's forced to let the piping drop, and we shall see the children stop. When lo, they reached the mountainside, a wondrous, corp wondrous portal opened wide, as if a cavern was suddenly hollowed. The piper advanced and the children followed, and when all were in at the very last, the door on the mountainside shut past. Did I say all, oh, no one was lame, and could not dance the whole way? And then after years, if you'd blame the sadness, he was used to say, this doll in our town since my playmates left, I can't forget the time to rep of all the pleasant sights they see, which the Piper also promised me. For he led us, he said, to a joyous land, joining the town just at hand, where waters gushed fruit trees grew, when flowers before the prairie view, and everything was strange and new. The sparrow was riding the peacock here, and their dogs all ran our fellow here, and horses of the horses were born of eagle's wing, and just as I became assured, my lame throat was severely cured. The music stopped and I stood still and found myself outside the hill, left behind against my will to go now limping as before and never hear of that country war. Alas, alas for Hamelin, there came to many a burger's pink, a text which says that heaven's gate opens to the rich at its easy rate as the needle's eye takes the in. The mayor said east, west, north, and south to offer the pipe of our little love, wherever was men's lot to find him, silver and gold to his heart's content, if only he'd return the way he went bring the children behind him. But when he saw it was lost endeavor, the piper and dancers were gone forever. They made a decree that lawyers never should think their record dated duly, if after the day of the month and year, these words do not as well appear. And so long after what happened here on the 22nd of July, 1376, and the better in memory to fix the place of the children's last retreat, they called it the Pied Piper Street, where anyone playing Piper Tabor was sure for his future to lose his labor, nor suffered the hospital or tavern to shock with words the street so solemn. And opposite the place of the tavern, they wrote the story on a poem, and on great church window painted, the same to make the world acquainted how their children were stolen away. And there it stands this very day. And I must not admit to say that in Transylvania there's a tribe of alien people who ascribe their way and dress, of which their neighbors lay such stress to their fathers and mothers having risen out of some subterranean prison and to which they were to pan a long time ago in a mighty band out of Hamlin Tom and Brunswick tough land but how or why they don't understand Radiation goggles, my god. You blinded.
morning. Welcome to the stream. We're about to shut down here, though. 